In this video, I want to go through another cipher that I think is pretty cool. It's called the Viginary Cipher or the Indecipherable Cipher. So just a brief history, it was first described in 1553 and is a cipher that is uh, known for this, its simplicity to both understand and use. And uh, it was unbreakable for over three centuries and uh, this is why it has the name the Indecipherable Cipher. It belongs to a class of polyalphabetic ciphers and another example of a polyalphabetic cipher is the Enigma machine. So. And, what a polyalphabetic cipher is, is unlike a monoalphabetic cipher, which for example would be a Caesar cipher, that is that one letter is mapped to one specific letter. For example, if we have a shift of three in the Caesar cipher, then A is mapped to D, but it is always mapped to D. In a polyalphabetic, one letter could be mapped to many different. So A could be mapped to D, F, G, etc. Many, many, many different. So how does the Viginary Cipher work? Well, first we need, to, we need to choose a secret key. And let's say that we pick a secret key, just banana, because we like bananas. And then what we need to have is a, we want to have a message that we want to encrypt. So let's say the message is, I really love peanuts. And so mathematically, how we would encrypt this using the Viginary Cipher is that the ith letter of our encrypted message would be the, the ith plain text letter plus the ith letter of, the, of our secret key, in this case the banana, so the ith letter of that, of that secret key, and then take that modulus 26. For decryption, we just use the, the same, except that now we use the encrypted letter, and then we subtract it with our, with our key. And so one question might be, well, our message is longer than our secret key, what do we do then? And I think this is better, uh, best described if we do an example. So let's say we have the message. So I changed the message a little bit because it didn't fit the screen, but uh, now I love peanuts instead. So let's say that now we have our secret key banana. So what we do is that we write banana uh, as, uh, matching one letter of our, of our uh, message. And then when it ends, we start over. So then we restart writing banana as far as it's possible. And then at the end, we try to write banana again, but of course uh, we stop uh, when our message ends. Then what we do is that we want to map each letter uh, corresponding to its position in the alphabet to a number. Um, so for example, I, becomes 9, and let's say L becomes 12, uh, O becomes yeah 15, etc. So we do that for all of them. And then what we want to do is that we want to add them. And we, we add them uh, element-wise. So in this case, the, the nine, 9 adds with two, 2, 12 adds with 1, 15 adds with 14, and the, only, the one thing we need to remember here is that it's modulus 26. So when we add 15 plus 14 and we take that mod 26, that will become 3. So we do that, we get some, an output. And how we get our encrypted message is now that we, again, we map it back to a letter. So for example, 11 becomes K, 13 becomes M, 3 becomes C, so it should start KMC. Then, so we see the encrypted message start with KMC, and it follows. Then, the, another question is, well, we have the encrypted message, how do we go back uh, to our original message, or the de decrypted message? Well, we, take, we start with this uh, encrypted, and we just convert it to numbers again. And then we, we do it again, we, we uh, write our secret key, which is banana. And then we now subtract each element wise. And uh, the only thing to remember here also is that we still do it in mod 26. So for example, the first one become 11 minus two, nine, 13 minus one, 12, three minus 14 is minus 11, which is 15 in mod 26. 
and then we just so we see that it's 15 and similarly for the rest and if we now map it back we get the decrypted message I love peanuts which is also the original message now so what are the problems that can arise with the engineer or why is it bad well by today's standard it is very easily uh, broken and uh, I will try to explain why just shortly um, but why it is broken uh, I mean why it is easily broken is because we can use something called frequency analysis we know that the secret key will repeat after a certain number of uh, uh, a certain length and then we can utilize that some letters are used much more frequently in the English language so for example the letter E is much more used than than X uh, and uh, A is used very often etc so there are some letters that are used much more frequently and also something we can use to break the Virginia cipher is something called digrams which means that pairs of, of um, letters are much more common than than other so for example um, at or in or let's see th would be common were uh, pairs of letters uh, but <clears throat> more info on how to break it I, I'll I'll link a, vi uh, a link in the video description that goes more in depth on how to actually break the Vigineer. And in the next video, I will code the Vigineer cipher in Python. So if you're interested in that, how that looks, uh, please check out the next video. The link is also in the description.